thank you for tuning in today to the What the World Needs is Jesus broadcast. I want to say we appreciate you for listening and, and watching us today. And also I want to say that the Lord loves you and the Lord appreciates you yes, today. If you'd like to get in contact with us, you can. our information will be going across the screen from time to time. If you'd like to call us or talk to us or uh, write to us or whatever, uh, the addresses and stuff will be there be, uh, going across the screen from time to time. But we want to say that God loves you today. Yes. No matter what you're going through, no matter what problem you may be having today, the Lord Jesus Christ said, just come unto me. <laughs> and his, his, his burdens is light. Amen. And he said, just come unto me. Paul, the apostle Paul said in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 4, he said, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace are ye saved. He said, he hath raised us up together and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Friend, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, I, it's my heart's prayer and my heart's desire today that, that, that you find you an altar, that you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because, my friend, that's what it's going to take to go to heaven. We got to have Jesus. Yes. If you're going to make, there's no other way. Jesus said, I am the way, the life, and the truth. Yeah. He said, no man can come unto the Father except by me. Friend, it's got to be Jesus Christ. The only way we're going to make it to heaven he said, if you try to climb up any other way, you're as a thief and a robber, friend. We've got to have Jesus. And I trust today that if you don't know him, that before this program's over, I trust that you find you an altar somewhere and you call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and just let Jesus into your heart. Now, Brother Ricky's going to come around at this time and he's going to have a little devotional with us and then we're going to go on with the program. Thank you, Brother Ronnie. And I'd like to say that, uh, that uh, I appreciate the Lord this morning. I, I thank Him that I'm saved and on my way to heaven. Amen? Yeah. I think that uh, 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 if you're not saved, you can be. Amen? It's not hard. Just ask, ask Jesus into your heart and you can be saved and on your way to heaven too. Amen? We're going to read a few verses here from, from Matthew chapter 25, starting in verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, and the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, Ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. Amen. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? Amen. And the king answered, and the, the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Amen. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Amen. For I, as, for I was and hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not sick and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, or thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not unto me. Amen. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Amen. 
Now, verse 31, it says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, this is talking about the second coming of Christ. Amen? Yes. Christ comes in his glory and all his holy angels come with him. He's going to sit on the throne on his glory for the last time. Amen? Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied this, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them to all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which, is ungod which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. And before him shall, shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as, shepherd, as a shepherd divideth the sheep from the goats. This is going to be the final separation, and the sheep being God's people and the goats being the wicked. Amen? Come on. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left hand. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of this world. This is Jesus talking to his children and giving them abundant salvation, amen, and the reward of the heavenly kingdom. Amen. For I was in hunger, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in, naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison. And you came unto me. Amen. Jesus is saying, all these things you have done for me, your reward is that abundant salvation and the reward of heavenly kingdom. Amen. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirst and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we the sick or in prison and come unto thee? They're saying, we don't remember seeing you in these positions. Amen. We don't remember seeing you in these situations. Uh, uh, hungry or thirsty or naked or sick or in prison. But Jesus says in verse 40, and the, and the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least, of these my brethren ye have done it unto me if you if you help someone in any of these situations amen it's the same as helping Jesus yes, amen right. if if you just help if you help anyone in any of these situations it's the same as helping Jesus I believe we're all called to help people in in these kind of situations amen if we're possible to help I believe we're all called to help and I don't believe you have to look very far today to find somebody that needs some of these things that's going on here. Food, water, clothes, or if it's just to go see somebody, go visit somebody that just needs somebody to come and talk to them. Amen? If you do these things for someone, it's just like helping Jesus. It's the same thing. It's, that's what Jesus would do if he was here. Amen? It's just like helping Jesus. Jesus has prepared a kingdom in heaven for those that try to help people in these situations. Amen? Jesus says in verse 41, then shall he also, then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Amen. Jesus said, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me to drink. I was a stranger, you took me not in. Amen. Naked and you clothed me not, sick and in prison, you visited me not. Amen. Then they answer and say, we didn't remember seeing you in all these situations, right? Then in verse 45, then shall he answer them saying, verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not unto me. Amen. They didn't try to help anybody in these situations. Amen. They was all out for their self. That's all they worried about was their self. And and they didn't try to, so if you don't try to help nobody, then you're not trying to help Jesus. Amen. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Amen. God wants us to help each other. He wants us to love one another. Amen. John said in 1 John 3 and 14, 
We know that we have passed from death unto life because we, we love the brethren. Amen. And that he that loveth his brother, brother abideth in death. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Amen. We have to love we have to love the brethren and have love in our hearts. Amen. If you're lost and undone without God today, just call upon the name of Jesus and he'll come into your heart. Amen. Get that love into your heart. And I know I know how to get love in your heart because Jesus is love. If you get Jesus in your heart, Jesus is love and he will save you. Amen. Now, Brother Ronnie's going to bring our message for today. Amen. Thank you, Brother Rick. And I'll tell you what, I enjoyed that little devotion. Amen. That I, I tell you why I want to be found. <laughs> I want to be found a doing God's work. Amen. Yes. I want to be found a serving the Lord. I, I want to be, you know what I've often said, and I, and I really believe this. I believe that if Jesus walked down the streets today, I believe that I don't believe that you I don't believe he'd go hunt up the richest person in this town right. to go to their house to stay tonight. You know what I believe he'd probably do? He'd probably either come out here, go out here and hunt up these guys that, that, that don't have nowhere to stay, and he'd probably stay all night with them. Yes, or he'd probably go down there to jailhouse or somewhere or somebody he'd go somewhere where somebody needed him. Folks, what we need to be doing is we need to be going somewhere where folks need us. Amen. We need to be we need to need to be trying to help somebody to Jesus, trying Glory to help to somebody yes. get. To the Lord Jesus Christ. If you got your Bibles today and you'd like to turn with me, I want to be reading you a, a, a word of scripture today in, in St. Luke, chapter 8. Luke, uh, let's see, is that 8 or 7? That's St. Luke, chapter 7. In Luke, chapter 7, I want to start with verse 36. Luke, chapter 7, and verse 36, the Bible says, And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went in to the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. Now, we're talking about Jesus here. And sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of anointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet and the tears and did with 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 tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed him with the anointment now when the pharisee which had bidden him saw it he spake within himself saying this man if he were a prophet listen to me this man if he were a prophet would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say to thee. In other words, Simon, I need to let you know something right here. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two, two debt debtors, that one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly gave, forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seeth thou this woman, I entered into thine house, thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with, her hair, with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou, thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are but to whom with is little forgiven. Her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little forgiven is some loveth little. Uh -huh. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. Yeah. And they that said it meet with them begin to say within themselves, Who is this that forgiveth sins also? And he said unto the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee, Go in peace. Man. Now this woman was 
here in, uh, and whenever Jesus, whenever she had, she had heard that, that Jesus was going into this Pharisee's house to eat, mm -hmm. this Pharisee had invited him in to eat. And when, Je <coughs> when she found out that Jesus had went into this Pharisee's house to eat, she, she, she went in and began to wash his feet and began to dry his feet and wash his feet with water and with the tears of her, uh, matter of fact, with, the, with her tears and, and with the hair of her, uh, with her hair, she began to dry his feet. And uh, she anointed his feet with oil and she was doing these things to Jesus to let Jesus know that, that Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. I know I've sinned. I know I'm a sinner. And I'm no, and Jesus said that, that told this Pharisee, this Pharisee was thinking within and said, well, I'm better than what she is. Who does she think she is? And if he was a prophet, then he would know. You see, first off is he wasn't a prophet. Amen. He's Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. The only, the only begotten son of the living God. But he was saying if he had been of God, if he was a prophet of God, then he would have known what was going on here. He would have known that this woman is a sinner, that she's, that she's been out into the world and she's done all of these things. And let me insert right here that my friend Jesus knows that we're sinners. Jesus knows that we need a savior. That's why he came and he died upon that cross. Yeah. That's why he came and he gave his life for us amen for that sinner that's out there amen that one that needs the Lord Jesus Christ you see Jesus need we need Jesus because he can save us from our sins <laughs> glory to the Lamb of God I don't know what that does for you but that just kind of stirs me up and get yeah. me stirred up thinking about what Jesus can do for me and what Jesus did for me and my friend let me tell you something if you've never knelt on that old-fashioned altar and you've never begun to ask God to forgive you of your sins and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life, I believe that what you need to do today is you need to just go ahead and stop what you're doing. Go ahead and get it right with God and the rest of your day will be blessed. Amen. Because Jesus Christ will come into your life and he'll make everything work out for us. Oh, Hallelujah. You see, our problem is, is we want to try to make everything work out ourselves. We want to think that we can take care of everything. I can handle everything, Brother Ronnie. I've got it all under control. But my friend, let me tell you something today. You don't have it under control. You can't make everything all right, my friend, within yourself. But my friend, if you'll just carry it all over to the Lord Jesus Christ, just begin to let the Lord Jesus Christ work in your life. God himself will help you today and we'll go with you through the problems, the troubles, and the things that you're going through today. You see, we all, we all have trouble in this life. We all have problems. These things come up against us and it's just a, we live in an evil, wicked world. Yes. Jesus said that they hated him and they would hate you. Friend, if you're a child of the living God, but the good thing about it is I've already been to the back of the book over there and I already know who's the winner. Amen. <laughs> Jesus has already went to hell, got the keys of death and hell yeah. away from the devil. Amen. He's already been down there and took all that way. And then he come back and he rose on that third day. He's already won victory over death. My friend, we don't got to worry about him winning victory over death, but my friend, what we got to worry about is do, do we have him? Do we have Jesus? Because my friend, the devil can go as a roaring lion if he wants to, and he is. He's a roaring like he's a big old lion. But I got good news for you today, my friend. Just turn it all over to the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, just let Jesus in your heart and in your life and then just say, Lord, I made a mess of it. Lord, here it is. Lord, you take care of it and Jesus Christ will come in and he will take care of it today. Hallelujah. I'm talking about Jesus Christ, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. I'm talking about Jesus. Amen. Jesus told this Pharisee, he said, he said, Simon, he said, I have somewhat to say to thee. And he said, Master, say on. And he began to tell him about the creditor that these two owed him debts and said that one owed him 500 pence and one owed him 50. And he said that whenever they didn't, frankly, whenever they didn't have the money to pay, that he forgave their debt. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. 
And then he asked him, he said, which one of you, which one of those do you think that will love him the most? And of course, he says, well, the one that was forgiven the most. Amen. The one that was forgiven of the 500 pence. That's the one that's going to love him. Why? Because he forgave him of the most sins. Because, and my friend, let me tell you something. You may be out there today and you may be thinking, oh, Brother Ronnie, I've done this. I've done that. I'm into this thing and I'm into that thing. I've done drugs. I've drank alcohol. I do all of these things. I go to the clubs. I go do all of this stuff. And you be thinking, oh, I'm too mean. I just can't get saved. I just, the Lord just, let me tell you something, my friend. He said, if you've done a lot, then he'll forgive a lot. Oh, hallelujah to God. You can't do too much what God cannot forgive you. God will forgive you and he will take all of your trespasses away from you. Hallelujah. Put them in the depth of the sea to never be remembered against you again. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Now listen to me. God said he'd never bring them up before you again. Amen. People won't let you forget it. There's people that won't let you forgive you. Well, you used to do this and you used to do that and you used to be this. And you, used to is the key word right there, folks. Because, my friend, when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, when you get Jesus right down in your heart and you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus comes on the inside and he makes a new man out of you. New wants, new things begin to happen. Bible says that old things pass away. Behold, all things have become new. My friend, let me tell you something. Just get down and just let Jesus have it all today. Yeah. Brother Ronnie, you don't know what I'm going through, and you're right. And probably, if unless I've been through it, I probably wouldn't understand it if you told me. But I know one that does. <laughs> Hey man, I know one that does understand. I know one that today that know that knows what you're going through. Not only does he know what you're going through, but he understands what you're going through. He's already been here. He's already been through it, and he knows just what you need today. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. He told this woman. He said, "Thy sins be forgiven thee." He said much. He said she had much sin. Folks, some of us has got a lot of sin in her life. Some of us has got much sin in her life. I know whenever I got saved, I had a lot of sin. I, th I thought I was probably about the meanest person. I, I was kind of like the Apostle Paul. I kind of felt like I was the chief of sinners. Amen. I felt like that I'd just done this and I'd just done, I'd been so mean and I'd done all of these things and I'd done all those things and I'd been this and I'd been that. But you know what? Jesus said, just bring it all to me. Just bring it all to the Lord Jesus Christ and Jesus will come down and Jesus will save you and he will lift those burdens right off of you. You say, well, Brother Ronnie, I just don't believe that. Uh, I'm glad you don't. Now try it. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to the Lamb of God. Now try it and see. Yes. God I said, try me. Taste of me. He said, see if I be good. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Try God. Now you've tried the devil. You've tried everything else. You've tried everything on this world. My friend, now try Jesus. Yes, sir. Amen. And see if Jesus. <laughs> see if Jesus. Can't help you. I think about the I think the, about the woman that's caught in adultery over there in John chapter 8 and verse 3. And I think about how that she was caught in the very act yeah. of adultery. And, and the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the, in his midst, in the midst. They say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Yeah. In other words, this woman was caught in the very act. You ever been caught in your sin? You ever been caught doing something wrong that wasn't right? Amen. You ever been caught right, just, just, just been caught red-handed as they call it. Just been caught red-handed right in your sin and you just caught. That's just all there are to it. You know, now you got to pay the price. Oh, hallelujah. They said this woman has been caught in the very act. Now, they said, Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what saith thou? This, they said, tempted him that he might have, that they might accuse him. 
But Jesus stooped down and with his finger, he began to write on the, uh, begin to write on the ground as he heard them not. As if he didn't hear them. He began to write on the ground. So when they continued asking him, he lifted, he lifted himself up and he said unto him, He that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down to write on the ground. He said, him that is without sin, cast the first stone. See, we're real bad. That we want. We're, we're real bad about. We want to tell what so and so did. Yeah. Oh, brother, so and so did this, or this one done that, or that one done that. We're real bad. We, we want to point out somebody else's sin. Yep. We want to point out what somebody else did, uh, but we don't want to look at old self right here. Uh, I mean, we don't want to look at our sin. We don't want to look at what we're. God said, sin is sin. Yeah. And my friend, if you're going to accuse somebody else, then you need to clean up your own life. Yeah. Hey man, we need, to, we need to get that beam out of our own eye, hey amen, before we start trying to get that little moat out of somebody else's eye. God said that sin is sin, and my friend, if we're going to sin, we're sinning, and we're sinning, then, then we need to clean ourselves up, yeah. worry about what old brother Ronnie's doing instead of what brother Ricky's doing, wow. hey amen, and then if I can keep myself clean, then I'll be doing good, hey amen. Yeah. My friend, let Jesus Christ take care of brother so-and-so over yeah. there. Let Jesus take care of that one over there. But my friend, just get a hold of what God's trying to tell us here. Just get a hold of Jesus Christ and let Jesus be Lord of Lord in your life. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory. He said the one without sin cast the first stone. Yeah. <clears throat> the Bible says that they all turned and went away. <laughs> Glory yeah. to the Lamb of God. You know why? You know why they turned and went away? Because we're all sinful. We all have sin in our lives. <clears throat> We've all got that sin in our life. And my friend, let me tell you something. You may say, yeah, but Brother Ronnie, he sinned bigger than I did. His sin's more than my sin. He said, what did what, what he just tell the woman over there? Where, much is, where, where there's much forgiven, that means there was much done. Amen. My friend, it doesn't matter how big it is, how little it is, how wide it is, or how tall it is. My friend, all we got to do is give it to the Lord Jesus Christ and he'll forgive it. He'll forgive a murderer just like he'll forgive a liar. My friend, let me tell you something. He'll forgive you of your sins no matter what you've done, no matter what you've been in, no matter what you've been through. But my friend, get that heart right with God and just let God be God in your life. Hallelujah. Now, friend, listen to me. Come on. Listen to this right here very carefully. Don't get that on them knees and just get, get, get a little case of the feel betters. Yeah. Don't get that on them knees and just go begin to, to just, just begin. When you get that on them knees, you start pouring your heart and your life out to God. When you get that on them knees and you begin to pray, you tell God what's going on in your life. Hey Amen. You tell God that you need this and you, you tell God you need Jesus Christ in your life. When you get that on them knees, you tell Jesus, Jesus, you come into my life and Lord, it's going to take you to straighten my life out because I've made a mess out of my life. Hallelujah. Friend, when I got in the shape, and I feel like there may be somebody watching today that may be in this shape. When I got in the shape to where that I was sick and tired of the life I was living. Yeah. When I got to where I was sick and tired of the life that I was living in, that's when I got ready to let Jesus in my life. Yes, amen. Friend, when you get to where that you're tired of what you're doing and you're tired, you're sick and tired of the life you're living, the lifestyle you're living and you're into this and you're into that. I don't know what all you might be in. There's plenty of things out there to get into. It's not just, you know, everybody's not into drugs and everybody's not into alcohol. Everybody's not into the, the, the clubbing and all that stuff. But my friend, there's all kinds of stuff out there that you go through. But let me tell you something today, my friend. We need to just realize today that we got to have Jesus. And whenever you get on them knees, just get a hold of the Lord Jesus Christ and he will come in. I urge you. Find you an altar. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and just let Jesus in your life. And until our next broadcast, may God richly bless you. In what the world.